Hey, when will I be YouTube famous? I don't know, probably never. What I do know is this. It's 4F Beauty and if I have done my editing correctly, you are watching me in black and white. Panic not. This is intended. If not, <laughs> welcome to Glorious Technicolor. This is episode, believe it or not, 41 of my pick series and I am delighted that it is also round three with my beautiful friend Kaylee. Now, the picture we are using today is a very special one because it was taken by someone who is not YouTube famous but is indeed famous. They have appeared in films such as ID and Threads. And they have been in a sequential series like Home to Roost, Coronation Street, Emmerdale. They even did an appearance in an episode of Life on Mars, the UK version, which is highly superior to the US one, which absolutely butchered the scripts and indeed the ending. So, to find out what this looks like in glorious Technicolor, what the picture is, who took the picture, well, there's only one way to find out, my darlings, and you have the best seat in the house. So, as I have said for some considerable time, and oft here echoed in less imaginative places, <laughs> Uh, grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up, and enjoy. Hey, welcome back from the intro. Um, you will know from the intro that this is now episode 41 of my pick series. I do. You know, when I started this, when I first had this idea at stupid o'clock in the morning, woken up by pain, I had no idea, A, that other people would find it as interesting as me, you know, other channels, other other makeup enthusiasts, makeup artists, etc. But B, I didn't realise how popular it would prove with all of you. By the way, my first ever attempt at doing my own acrylic nails. Not perfect and not pointed, but I decided to start off simple. Um, they're okay. I mean, pff, clearly they're not professional standard, but do you know what? Uh, they're on. <laughs> How long they'll stay on? Who knows? But my stick on um, Tiger King nails that I had, that I bought from the nail artist hence professional. Um, they actually stayed on for 12 days, so I was well impressed with that. Anyway, this is not about nails, this is about this collab. And it is with my 24 hour clock buddy Kaylee. Um, we laugh that because she's ex-military, um, she had to leave the US Army because of a back injury. <sighs> we have empathy for each other. Uh, and from me having worked with the British Legion doing tours all around the world where whenever you do an itinerary you always do it in 24 hour clocks so there are no mistakes plus military men are always talking you know I'll have a cup of tea NATO standard which if you're wondering is white with two sugars don't, don't even go there <sighs> but she and I are one of the few people that you can say 1600 hours and we both instantly know that's four o'clock in the afternoon without having to think about it. it it's it's instinctual so we are each other's 24 hour clock buddy because we know we can talk 24 hour clock without confusing the other person and in fact it clarifies things quite nicely thank you so much um my turn to choose the picture and it's a real special one this time. Before I show you the picture, let me show you who took 
of the picture. Let me just move you that way a little bit. There we go. That is what Reese Dinsdale looks like now. That is what Reese Dinsdale looked like when I first saw him on a program called Home to Roost where he starred alongside the inimitable John Thor who obviously went on to be Reagan in the Sweeney and Inspector Morse. Now, Reese here has done a lot of things through the years. To try and list them all would be crazy. Um, but I'm, he appeared in one of my favourite shows, which when the US adapted it, they completely ruined the whole storyline. If you can, try and watch the UK version of Life on Mars. I swear to you, you'll enjoy it so much more than the American version. Um, and he actually appeared in the second series, episode five, which happens to be my favourite ever episode, not just because he's in it, but because it starts off with the Camberwick Green opening. UK peeps of a certain age will have fond memories of Camberwick Green. The reason I'm waffling like this is because he's currently in, um, he was in one of our soaps called Coronation Street for many years. He's now just uh, started in Emmerdale. And obviously all the filming and that stopped with the lockdown and everything. So he, he appeared and then it's like, uh, well I did about a month with the filming and then we stopped. But he does, weekly, he does a show called The Reese's Pieces on um, Periscope and Twitter. Where he comes on and he answers your questions and chats to you. Which I love, because I love having the kind of interaction where, it's like Danny John Jules who plays the cat from Red Dwarf. He's replied to me a few times. Um, Mason Kane who in the Ashes to Ashes, which was the second, well, third, fourth and fifth series, following on from the first two Life on Mars series, um, he played the young ghost copper. I'm not going to spoil it for you in case you haven't seen it. I've actually got him as a friend on Facebook. What? what? Hello? Excuse me. But I asked Reese a question. <clears throat> And he actually answered my question yesterday because it was relating to his uh, appearance in that particular episode. Uh, if I can get the film clip to play, I will play it for you. If not, moving on. Yeah, I'll talk about that. Um, if you were playing one of the coppers in Life on Mars instead of the character Simon Lamb, who would you want to be? Gene, Sam, Ray or Chris? You'd have to say Gene Hunt, wouldn't you? I mean, it was an absolute godsend of a part, wasn't it, for Phil? He dropped, he dropped on there, didn't he? As they say, what a, what a, and he did a brilliant job. Um, what a gift, what a gift of a part. Um, it's funny. Um, okay. He regularly he gets up very early, um, and he lives uh, up up north in Yorkshire, up where my well, where my dad's side of my family comes from. Obviously, Mum's side is the Welsh side, hence the very confusing accent that I have. And he took this particular picture of, I'm guessing that is sunrise, because sunset's normally redder than that. So I'm guessing that's sunrise um, over the beach with the gorgeous red boat, upturned fishing boat with the crab pot at the end of it. And I just loved the amount of different colours and every time I looked at it, I could see something different. So I messaged him and I said, oh my God, is it okay please to use this photo as a makeup inspiration on my YouTube channel? It's stunning, I'll credit you with the pic, obviously. And he replied back with the credit, yes, and a thumbs up. So, that's why he has his name across the top of the photo, and why I took a little bit of a walk down memory lane with you today. Uh, but you can see there's so many, so many colours in that photo. Um, let's bring you back to centre again. Well, centre-ish, kind of. Now, 
one of the um, things that I said when I started this photo inspiration series, I said that the idea is that two people use exactly the same photo as an inspiration for a makeup look. They don't have to use all of the colours in the photo, but they can't add colours in. So you couldn't add a brown in if there isn't a brown there. You couldn't put um, a purple in if there isn't a purple there. That's it. That's the two rules. Only use the colours in the picture, but you don't have to use all of them. That's it. Two rules. Really simple. So when you look at that, in the sky alone, you've got like a powdery blue going through a peach down to a lemon. You've got the bright yellow white of the sun. You've got the sort of mauvey colour or mauvey colour of um, the, the other bank or the other island maybe or coastline. Um, and then you've got the sort of the building on the left which I would imagine is painted cream but because of the light looks like a dusky green. You've got the black of the stone wall. You've got the gorgeous bluey grey browny pebbles from the beach from the shingle. You've got the brown crab pot. You've got the red boat and just over on the far left side there you've got a bright blue lifesaver. So there are an awful lot of colours to choose from in that picture. So I have grabbed three different palettes today. For the pastels of the sun and the, the, the sky, so I've got my blue and I've got my yellow and I can kind of mix a bit of this pink into the yellow to give me the peachy colour. And then in my Marvellous Mauves, I've got the opposite coastline. And then for that red boat, because let's face it, it is the integral part of the shot, I've got this gorgeous red from the Kaleidos Futurism 2 Cyber Bronze. So. That's my plan. Um, this is still a teaching channel after all of my waffling. Um, so I go at a speed that even beginners can keep up with. Uh, if this is too slow for you, well I can't go any quicker because of my chronic pain won't let me, but there is a speed widget up there somewhere. Please feel free to use it and speed me up as you see fit. Now, uh, being a teaching channel, I have for some time now mentioned the differences between deep set eyes and hooded lids because there are differences. Although there are similarities to the way that eyeshadow wears and performs on those types of lids, the application technique and the workarounds for each type of lid are very different. And I hear so many people, including the bigger beauty gurus, saying oh I've got hooded lids, when in actuality they've got deep set lids or deep set eyes. Um, I used to say that I had hooded lids until a pain somnia thing when I was scrolling through YouTube and Google and what can I find out interesting today that I found um, it was a booklet from I think the 1950s which explained how to properly do a smoky eye on deep set eyes and I'm like hang on a minute I've got deep set eyes I haven't got hooded lids <laughs> ding so from that point on I've tried to um, have a clip where I talk you through the differences and explain the workarounds now if you've not seen my films before I come in very very close for the tutorial literally just my eyes will fill the screen so please don't jump and scream if it's a bit of a shock for you especially if it's first thing in the morning 
Um, but here goes, I'm going to insert the clip in just a second or two and once the clip is done I'll be back to start applying some colour to my lids. Now it's time for the clip. Now, um, my eyes have this primer on it. This is the Chrome Pebble Primer in blank page cotton. I do have a discount code for this. It is not affiliated. I don't earn money from it. But if you use my code, you save, I think it's 15%. And I earn pebbles that I can offset against future purchases from them. The reason I love the Chrome Pebble Primer is because it's... It goes on like a cream, but it has a powdery finish. So unlike when you use a concealer or like a MAC paint pot, for example, you have the trade-off between do I set it so I can blend easily or do I leave it tacky so that I get the full impact of colour. You don't have that trade-off with this. You can blend on it instantly and you don't lose any of the colour. Now she does six different shades of this at the moment. White is the lightest, the deepest two are a chocolate brown and a black, then there are three different skin tone shades as well, so you should be able to find one that will work for you. Um, I apply this with a flat brush, just a very light layer, and then I buff it over with a fluffy blending brush take any excess off and to make sure I've got a nice even layer across the eye. Now, I've got deep set eyes, so I get the same issues that people with hooded lids get. I get transference of colour onto the upper lid. If I'm cutting my crease, I have to cut onto the upper lid, not just through the socket. And if I'm using glitter, even with glitter glue, I get a bare patch in the middle. Because people with hooded lids get the same symptoms as people with deep set eyes, I see a lot of people with deep set eyes thinking they have hooded lids when they don't. So they follow the guidelines for hooded lids and wonder why their eyes still don't look right. So, I'm going to explain very easily for you how to tell the difference and what the two workarounds are. With my brows relaxed and looking straight forward, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. You can't see a lot of it, but you can see it. So I haven't got hooded lids. It's only if this upper lid comes down and completely covers part or all of the mobile lid that you have a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. I'm going to demonstrate on this eye deep set eyes because this is the eye that I'm blind in so I'll stay on screen and in focus. If I cover a visible mobile lid and close my eye you can see I've got as much if not more lid that tucks back away out of sight. And if I do the same on the top lid, the static lid, you can see I've got about the same amount of lid again that tucks back away out of sight when the eyes open and it's those two bits of lid rubbing together that give me the same issues that hooded lids get so what are the workarounds if you have hooded lids get a brush something like this or a pencil brush sketch out on your static lid where you want your new crease to fall now obviously that's going to reduce the space between the crease and the brow so just use smaller blending brushes, or if necessary, take the colour right up to the brow, instead of leaving a gap. If you have deep set eyes like myself, all we need to do when we're putting the colour through the crease, which nine times out of ten will be the deepest colour that we're using, just sit back, relax your brows, and make sure you've brought it up high enough that you can see it when your eyes are open. So, two very different workarounds for two very different types of lids but that have very similar issues. Hey, I am back. Right, okay, I'm going to start off with this Morphe M139, which is, I call these tulip ones. I think they're called a 
pointed crease brush. I'm not entirely sure, but I call them tulip ones because they're loosely packed for blending, but come up to a point, but not as much as what I would consider a pointed crease brush or a pencil brush. Hopefully that will help in terms of you finding a similar one for yours. Right, I'm going to the Marvellous Moves. I hate the fact that the names are on the back. Oh my god, I love the names of these. <laughs> that first one. Fluffy! Rosy. Wishy-washy. Wasn't Wishy-washy the washerwoman from the Folk of the Faraway Tree novels by Annie Blyton? Was that Dame Washalot? No, that was Dame Washalot. Wishy Washy was from. Aladdin, maybe? I don't know. Anyway. Uh, spaced Out and Wine Stain. I'm going to start off with Wishy Washy, partly because I like the name of it, and partly because it's about the right shade for the opposing bank of the uh, coastline. As always hella kick up which is fine because you can just pick up that loose pigment next time round hold the brush right at the end to put as little pressure on as possible and we're going to start off we're going to do circular movements in this direction towards the nose and then reverse the direction to come back out because I'm 46 years old I've lost 14 stone that's over 200 pounds skin of my eyelids moves uh, but I know women in their 20s have always been uh, slim, that have looser eyelids. Uh, but by doing this circular movement and reversing the direction, it helps prevent the tiger striping or barcoding effect. So, let's do that while I talk to you a little bit more about Kaylee. So, I have already told you that she is ex-military. Ex-American military, that is. She, um, she had to leave the army because of a back injury um, which is a real shame because I, I get the feeling from things that she said that she really misses the sort of camaraderie and everything that she got whilst in the military but obviously your health has to take precedent that blended out beautifully. It's the first time I've used this. Um, it's only the second dose of colours palette I've got. I've got Snow Angel was the first one. And uh, this is the second one and I'm really liking it. I can see why people rave about their um, formula now. Anyway, she and I have been friends on YouTube now for quite a while. Um, she was commenting on my films, that's how I discovered her channel. Obviously I was commenting back on hers and she's got these amazing Great Danes that, as with all big dogs, they still think they're lap dogs. And they still try and sit on your lap even though they're huge great things. I love Great Danes, Scooby-Doo of the dog world. Um, big as buggery but soft as... Soft as satin, just in case the god kids are watching. Although I'm sure they've heard Auntie Angie swear before. Well, the youngest one hasn't because he's only 18 months old, but there we go. But um, yeah, we've been in a couple of, of sort of group collabs. Um, but we hadn't actually collabed together. And she commented sent me a message saying why have we not collabed on our own and I'm like I don't know do you want to do a pick collab and she yes please <laughs> um, and we've been firm friends ever since I absolutely adore the woman she's just she's got such a lovely sense of humour and again she's I've struck very lucky with the friends that I've made on YouTube um, they're all 
people that I would have as friends in real life. Um, and if ever I got to America, she would absolutely be one of the ones that I would go to visit. I keep saying I'd love to do sort of like a cruise across to America on a boat because God didn't give me wings, but it did give me enough ballast to float if the ship goes down. So, uh, I'd love to cruise across and then get like a um, you know, 52 caddy powder blue and just, you know, convertible and just drive around America, basically. I'm just cleaning this brush off on a microfiber cloth. I used to use colour switches, um, but I found they're actually quite damaging to your brushes, especially if you're using natural hair. That isn't that synthetic, but even so. Right, I'm going to go in with the Jeffrey Morphe JS12. It is clean, it's just stained. And I'm going to swap palettes and open up my sugar pill this is the sugar pill fun size the little love that hollow i'm a bit of a magpie really right so i'm going to start off by going into continue question mark which is the pastel yellow i'm going to use that just on the inner part here initially over the edge of the mauve, blending the two together. But then bringing it up slightly above it. Just to give a really nice, soft blend between the two colours but yeah I, I do I absolutely adore Kaylee I think she's she's an absolute sweetheart she really is uh, if you haven't already watched her what are you doing with yourself as soon as you finish watching me you really need to go and watch her film because I can tell you while you're watching me I'm watching her because I want to see what she does with this picture because one of the things that I love most about this series is seeing which parts of the, the photo or the painting or the graphic that, I, that we use to inspire us which bits call to different people because to me the things that jumped out most was the boat, the pastel sky and believe it or not that little blue lifesaver over on the edge it really and yet most people when you show them that photo don't spot the blue lifesaver it's, it's really weird the, the way that different people are inspired by different parts of the same photo which is great, it really is, it, it's just, it's, I find it fascinating. Right, I'm going to do a combination of high score and continue. High score is the orange, but I kind of want more of a peach. Yeah, there we go, that's kind of more the colour I wanted. And just blend that as we did the previous one. Obviously I cleaned the brush off before I dipped into a new colour. So how's your day been? Has it been a good one? Has it been a bad one? How are you coping? Lockdown driving you nuts yet? Have you got kids? Are they driving you nuts yet? Must admit, hubby said to me, 
hearing the horror stories, because obviously he works for, um, I say obviously, you wouldn't know this unless you're a regular viewer of mine, he works for a hardware store in our town, which is classed as essential, because obviously people still need to be able to fix busted loos and, you know, etc, etc. So, he's still been going into work which worries the heck out of me, but, you know, it's one of those things. But he said that he's hearing such horror stories from the people at work that have got kids. He's like, oh, Ange, I know it's upsetting that we can't have kids, but right now I'm really glad we haven't got kids. And I can understand what he means, because at least... It's not like the kids are on holiday and you can shoot them off down the park to go and see their mates or disappear off out to the coast or take days out. You've got to try and say to them, well, you can't go to school, but you can't go and see your mates either. Try explaining that to five years old, six year olds. They just don't. Although if you like the neighbours that we've got, yeah, they don't care. They've been flouting the rules all the way through. Let's not get me started on that, eh? Right, I'm going to dip into 8-bit, which is the blue, to do this outer edge heart. You know, I had no idea, apart from knowing that I wanted to do the red for the boat, I had absolutely no idea what I wanted to do read the rest of the picture until I sat down here this morning I'm very much like that though I, I um, unless I've got a specific look that I'm recreating or whatever I don't tend to plan how the look's going to go I mean obviously with my Zodiac series I'm restricted somewhat to the colours I can use, but again, in terms of how I use those colours, I don't really decide that until I sit down. Um, I've had a couple of people ask me to do a quick film on how I choose which colours go well together, um, or which colour, how to choose where to start in a palette, because obviously I've got my colour theory films that I did which helps you work out which colours will work together. Um, but, uh, yeah, I will, I will do one at some point, if there's enough interest in it, explaining how, when I look at a palette, if I've not got specific, like here, following specific colours, um, how I choose where I want to start, which colour I start with, how I build a look around the colour, you know. I do like this sugar pill palette. It really is stunning. And having this and having Jeffrey's Jawbreaker, I no longer feel the need for Pastel Goff, which is great because I've been lusting after that for a while, but obviously Kat Von D was on my, well she still is on my shit list, but I'm still waiting for definitive proof that she's not getting any money from Kendo anymore from selling her sales back particularly with them wanting to use up the old components that have got her name on them first before rebranding 
I do struggle here sometimes to get the pigment to lay down because I get a very very dry patch just there so if you get something similar blend like I did so you've got the edges blended out how you want then pick up some more pigment on the brush and just tap it into place and tap to blend rather than and then you can build the colour up comme ci comme ça et voila right I'm just going to grab a clean brush a very very loose packed one and I'm literally just going to buff all the way along the top there because I want that to be an absolutely seamless blend of colour seamless like John McLean and you can do that you can just I mean if you want to leave it more structured and editorial then leave it structured and editorial but for this one I wanted it to just buff and blend beautifully into all of the colours so that there's no real start and stop to any of them. Hmm. Like that. I like that a lot. Just close that up. Now's the fun bit. Well, I've got my caffeine spray for spraying the pigment after I've put it on the brush. Never go into a pressed pigment with a wet brush. You will kill it. I can promise you that. So I'm going into my Kaleidos Cyber Bronze and I'm going to go into Infrared. I'm going to pack that red. Onto the brush, like so. And then just spritz it. And then I'm going to dry this ferrule off. Easiest way to do that is stick it in the knuckles and spin. You don't want moisture getting down and loosening the glue that holds the bristles. Now this is a Jeffrey Morphe JS24. This is a lip brush but I like it because with the point I can get right into the corner of my deep set eyes. without it coming too far up the middle there. How stunning is this red pigment? And you don't have to use a setting spray to wet the pigment, you can use priming spray, moisturising spray like MacFix Plus or Mario Badescu. I'm just going to use the tip of the bristles to buff that into where the matte shade meets it. You can even use just plain water. Just don't go into the pigment when it's wet. Just dry the brush off before I go back in. Oh, someone's excited. And pack the pigment on the brush. Now, with my blind eye, I do have to do it slightly differently because I have super, super deep creasing on this eye where it got pulled around at the ophthalmic when I was five years old. See these super deep creases here? 
Excuse me. Hay fever. What I have to do. Hi. What I have to do is very gently stretch that lid out. Otherwise, what happens is that the pigment, instead of being nicely blended out like this, fills up quite loosely in the deep creases and then through the day as I move my eye it starts cascading down getting into my eye down onto my cheek and it gets actually quite painful if it gets in your eye but you can see what I did was I only stretched the part of the lid that had the super deep creasing on I only stretched it out as far as I need to, I didn't put it right out to my ear roll. And as soon as I'd applied the pigment, I let go. So I don't stretch the lid out any more than I have to. Again, just using the tip of the bristles to blend. I really like this. I'm really, really liking this. Ooh, pretty. Right, my lovelies, I'm going to pause you while I go and pop some base products on and some brows. And I will be back to finish this eye look off with you. Now, I sadly am going to have to wait for the next time that I press record in order to speak to you. But for you, it will be absolutely instant. So I'll see you right now. And I am back. As you can see, I've actually added a blue wing for the blue lifesaver. And I used the Revolution, um, I don't know what they call this. I mean, this is their black one, the uh, Renaissance Flick, or whatever it's called. Love, love, love it. Um, and they've since bought out a brown and a blue. Um, and I've obviously bought both of those. Now this is only the second time using the blue one. The first time I used it, it did bleed into fine lines. But that could have been the shadow that I was using. Who knows? But, right, opening up my Marvellous Moves. Got my flat top brush. Uh, brows, I soap browed up as usual and then used this to apply some of this so that it matched the aesthetic. Uh, and I used the, st the, the shade Wine Stain, which is the shade I'm about to. No, I didn't. I used spaced out, I beg your pardon, the second to deepest. I'm going to go into wine stain now. And I'm going to kind of link it up to my wing and just run that along the lower lash line like so. Same from this side. Except I flinch a lot. Because obviously I'm blind in this eye. No peripheral vision. And only muscle memory. And a viewfinder far too far away for comfort. To uh, ensure I don't poke myself in the eye. Regular viewers can tell you how often that happens. And now this, my favourite smudger brush. This is actually the brush from the Tarte Graveyard Girl palette. Taunt Queen one. Flat topped, but chunky. Perfect for smudging under the lower lashes. And I'm going to wishy-washy. 
and I'm going to use that to lightly buff the lower lash line. Now, I don't put things in my waterline as a rule because I've always had super watery eyes. Uh, add to that fibro, which makes your eyes water. Add to that hay fever, you heard the sneezing. I really don't think that uh, putting anything on the waterline is a good idea today at all. But by smudging the lower lash line, you can still have that dramatic lower line and you can still um, finish the look, so to speak. Now, this is a lip brush that I bought from eBay probably a decade ago. This is one of the new iHeartRev Heartbreakers highlighter. This is shade Unique, which is half white, half pink, as you can see. So I'm going to go into the white side and pop that on my inner corner, bringing it around, dragging it under the tear duct to blend in with the shades under my eye. I like to do that because for my eye shape I feel that it finishes the look off. If you just want to do your inner corner and leave it at that, then obviously you can do. Because it's your face, you paint it however you want. I'm just here to show you some tips and tricks and how I would do it. Now I'm going to go into the pink side and pop that just up under the tail of the brow because along with everything else ladies and gents apparently Gravity affects our brows as we age as well. Seriously. So by doing that it gives you the impression of a raised brow or a high brow. <laughs> uh, which can give the illusion of youth and let's face it, we can all do with a little bit of that every now and again. So I am going to pause you for one last time. I'm going to lob some more of this highlighter over strategic parts of my face. Uh, choose a mascara and a lipstick. Do something and with this hair that is fresh out of the shower. <laughs> I'll be back with my finished look. Don't go anywhere. I am back. Hello. Okay, so I use the pink side and then put a little bit of the white just on the highest point of my cheeks. I use my little mini IT Superhero Mascara. For Lippy, haven't used this one for a while. This is from the um, ASM Artistry. These are the ones where they're designed for everything about it can be ASMR from the ridges on the outside to the snap of the magnet to the look of the glitter on the outside which does not come up on your lips by the way okay it's just on the outside it smells like vanilla and gives you a cooling tingle when you use it so there are lots of elements to this um, yeah I've got the nude cool vanilla they do nude and a red at the moment you can either have a cooling tingle or a warming tingle or no tingle and you can have with or without the vanilla scent. So if you are particularly sensitive to anything like that, you don't have to have it. Um, but I do really like this. It's um, it's a very comfortable wearing and pretty much universal nude, I would say. I think even the deepest of melanin skins, if you were to use um, a lip liner with it, I think you could still get away with this. So, there's the picture again to remind you, and this is my final look, inspired by Rhys Dinsdale, actor, director, etc. 
photo. What do you think? Which colours call to you from there? Which ones? If you were collabing with me, which colours would you have pulled from that photo to do your look with? Which one's cool to you? Did you see the blue lifesaver? Um, or are you just drawn to that red boat and just can't see anything else past the, the boat, which is beautiful, let's face it. Right, if you are one of my regular 4F babies, please double check you are still subscribed. YouTube are still unsubscribing you. But cheekily, they are leaving me in your news feed, so it's not obvious that you've been unsubscribed. Once you double checked that you're subscribed and you've still got your notifications on, be awesome if you could give this film a like and maybe a comment. It really does help with the algorithm and pushing it out to people who've not seen me before. And once you've done that, I'm going to need you to go across to my beautiful 24 hour clock buddy and check out her film to find out which colours from this picture appealed most to her which palettes she's chosen and what her finished look is like did she spot the blue lifesaver or was she just drawn to the boat and the shingle and the sea and the suns Mm -hmm. There's only one way to find out the answer to that and many more, and that is to go and watch her film. If you are here from her channel, however, or you have stumbled across me by a complete accident, hi, hello, welcome, I hope you're enjoying it here. If you've made it this far through the film, I'm guessing there's something about this mad bird that you've uh, quite enjoyed listening to or watching. That being the case, it'd be awesome if you too would like to join the 4F family. It is super easy to do. There is a red subscribe button down there somewhere. Feel free to click it, or as Sophia would say, shamash it. Then ring the bell and say yes to all the notifications, choosing all notifications, and then you'll maybe get told one in four of my films when they upload. You know what YouTube's like at the moment. Not helpful. But talking of my other films, there are an awful lot you can choose from. So basically, pick a playlist, and as I have said for some considerable time now, but oft here echoed in other places, grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up, and indulge. Right, my lovelies, all that remains for me to say as ever is you'll stay fabulous and i will see you next time bye for now